Okay, I've got another problem up here. This time I didn't give you a formula for a function. Instead, I gave you a table of values. So I've given you time, which is in seconds, and velocity, which is in meters per second. And I'm telling you that this particle is always moving in the positive direction. So that for this problem, velocity is actually the same as speed. Okay. Now, the first time where I give you any measurements is at time one. That doesn't necessarily mean that's when the particle started moving. But as I read the question, we're asked to find the distance over the time interval from time one to time 10. So the starting time doesn't always have to be time zero. It often will be, but it doesn't have to be. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to add to the directions. Let's use a lower sum this time. So over each subinterval, I'm going to pick the smallest value. Now here, I can't really use a regular partition. Because if I take a look at when I took the measurements of what the speed were, I didn't take it at regular time intervals. These times are two seconds apart. Three, one, three. So I can't use a regular partition because I don't have that data. Now, generally, if you're setting up an experiment and you're taking measurements, you want to take them at regular time intervals. But this is the data that we have. So I'm going to have to just work with what I have. I want a picture. So I'm going to start by putting t here and v of t, which since it's positive is the same as speed. And I'm just going to plot the points that I have. So it looks like we're going from time 1 to 10. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I'm going to just mark off. This would be 3, then 4, 5, 6, 7. These are the times at which I have measurements. Okay. Let me put some tick marks on my vertical axis. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. So at time one, my speed was five meters per second. At time three, we were up here at 10 meters per second. At time six, we come back down to eight. At time seven, we're back down at five. And at time 10, we're up at nine. Right about there. Okay. So. You'll notice this basically breaks things up into one, two, three, four subintervals. Now, the first subinterval goes from one to three. I only have two data values there, but I want to pick the lower one because I said we were going to do a lower sum. So, obviously, the lower point here is this one. So, I'm going to extend that height across that interval and then just draw in the walls to connect this to the x axis. So notice that's giving me a rectangle like this. The base is 2, and the height is 5. Now I know that that represents 2 seconds, and that represents 5 meters per second. I'm going to just keep that in mind and not write that every time. The next subinterval goes from 3 to 6. Now, these are the points that I have here. This height was 10, this height was 8. 8 is obviously the lower one, so that's the one I'll pick. I'll extend that over this interval and then drop these walls down to complete the rectangle. So that's giving me a rectangle like so. Now, the base is 3, because this is 3 seconds. The height is 8. Looks like I inadvertently made that a little too high. Let's make that at 8. There we go. Okay. Now my next interval is much shorter, just going from 6 to 7. The speed here was 8. The speed here is 5. 5 is the smaller, so I'll extend that across the interval and connect that to the x-axis. So I'm getting this little rectangle here. The base is just 1 and the height is 5. Okay. And then my last interval goes from 7 to 10. The speed at 7 was 5. The speed at 10 is 9. 9 is definitely bigger. 
So I'll extend that across this entire interval and then just draw in the vertical sides of my rectangle. So that's giving me something like so, where the base is three and the height is nine. So I can say my distance is approximately five times two plus eight times three plus five times one plus nine times three. Here the bases aren't all the same, so I can't factor those out. So this is just 10 plus 24 plus 5 plus 27. Oh dear, arithmetic. 10, 24, 5, and 27. 4, 5. Looks like that's going to be 66. Okay. So this would be 66. And let's see what the units would be. These bases were all time, which we were measuring in seconds. These heights were all speeds in meters per second. Seconds times meters per second is going to give me meters. So we would estimate, although we know it's an underestimate, that this particle moved 66 meters over the time interval from 1 to 10. Now, I was told that was my time interval. If I hadn't been told that, I might have wondered whether I ought to extend this over to zero, and that was my starting time. So you did need to be told what your starting time was for this problem. 